today's video, we are building a small block for a lowrider. There's parts everywhere and we got broken piston rings and all kind of the bottle going on. Oh my days. <laughs> Pretty sure that, yep. Perfectly 50-50 split. Today, this video, the whole 283 is on the table and this is a completely empty block, except the dipstick. And I found some damage that was pretty damn bad and that's definitely the reason why this thing had under compression, it was eating oil, bottling up spark plugs, two stepping out the rear. So the whole block is cleaned up and all the parts that are going on the block I'm gonna clean up here later in the video. I got the block hold, fine stone, so we got the whole thing like straighten up a little bit again. I know it's not a proper machine home when you go to a machine shop and stuff like that. But I hold it, a three step home with three different stones. Got some nice 45 degree cross hatching in there. And I was barely any ring ridge or anything, so this block is actually in really good, great shape. I'm gonna start off by just throwing in a clip real, real quick here with uh, me uh, pulling out the pistons and I get a pretty big surprise because uh, I think all seven piston rings just uh, was like cracked and just fall out the block when I took the pistons in. So catch you guys in a bit when you see that. Hey guys, sorry for interrupting, but if you wanna help my video out here, don't forget to hit the like button down below. It helps out way more than you think. So I just started a time lapse actually pulling out the pistons, right? But I realized that I don't really wanna do a time lapse because uh, I pulled three pistons so far and I'm on the fourth one now. And every time the piston just comes out of the, the cylinder, whatever, the top piston ring has cracked the exact the same place on all four pistons so far and perfectly like falls off the piston and down on the ground. We're gonna catch the next four pistons when I take those out if they do exactly the same but if you look over here all of them pop out of the cylinder just like this perfectly 50 50 split and then drops down in the oil pan i have underneath the engine like cling ding 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 and it has happened on pretty much all of them including the one we are popping out right now luckily it doesn't look like on these four pistons so far though that the piston itself has taken any damage so far fingers crossed that we don't have to uh, buy any new pistons here so this one seems to be okay i guess well i just said that and then the other oh the other part already fell out. I can see the crack. Did you guys hear that? Pretty sure that, yep. You heard one drop, another one, and another one. How can all the piston rings crack, like at the same point? Well, we don't know how long this thing has been running, you know? So maybe that one cracked at 10,000 miles, this one at 20,000, this one at 30. You never know. You never know. You never know. Okay. One good cylinder out of eight, I guess. Story of all my engines. <laughs> There goes one piece, there goes the other piece. <laughs> oh, it's like being at the Taj Mahal. Do you want to touch my, okay, it's family show. <laughs> engines so I got a brand new re-ring kit for this thing with new piston rings uh, main rod bearings uh, cam plugs I mean every damn thing you need for this engine timing chain cover and stuff so we're gonna start to throw this thing together now so everything is sealed and then we're gonna take the whole engine and just dip it in Chevy orange engine hoist into a bucket and then up again so it's time to take all these eight power pumpers, put them up here real quick, get the old rings off. I'm just gonna wire wheel them real quick, get some of the, the oil contamination and the carbon stuff uh, off them. And I'm also gonna inspect a little bit further if any of like the ring glands or whatever is damaged. But uh, so far I don't see anything on, of any of, of the stemples. Stemples. I don't know why I'm saying stemples. By the way, stemple, that's piston in Danish if anyone is wondering. Clean them up, do rings on, throw them in the old block. when the stemple I, I said stemple again what the hell then i'm gonna throw some rings on them and then we're gonna drop them into the block over here let's see if the water displacement of the fall thief try will work all right time to get some main bearings in this thing then of course a crank after that so just before putting the main bearings in i actually think i'm gonna put in the, the camshaft because it's a little bit easier you can actually get down here pro tip if you will <laughs> installing camshafts are easier without a crank because you can put your hands in there lift the, the cam through and everything, so it, it's a lot easier than, uh, than the other way around.
crankshaft the Rooney in here to the old powerhouse. What I'm gonna do right now is I have some assembly do here, and I'm just gonna put a little dapple do here on all the, the rod bearings here. You see right here, I mean, crank, rotates real nice and smooth. Zyvi Intimidator! Yes, sir. I don't know what's going on, okay? I'm sorry. It's, it's just who I am. And you already know this channel. There's only one way to talk these, and that's only one way. Talk to spit. By the way, real quick, I got a comment on one video from like two weeks ago or whatever on, on me impacting, I think it was the flywheel or something else on this engine. These are really cheap Chinese impact guns that I have. It's only to like run bolts in and down, right? If I actually mash this thing in on like a wheel stop or whatever, right? It only talks it down like 20 foot pounds or something. This is like all this can take. Full power, uh, full battery, everything. I can hold it while impacting. So of course we want to talk this down the right way. <laughs> Get away, you bastard! Yeah. Oh shit! I adjusted the wrench for foot pounds instead of doing some meters. Two seconds, y'all. He said. Anywho, fun fact: while I was pulling that engine around, right? Somehow, uh, magically, I actually hit the 70 foot pounds as it's supposed to be talked down at. I'm telling you, this is a professional engine shop, and my and my feel with a torque wrench is nobody does it better than me. Uh. So we got the oil pump in, and let's see if I can I cannot talk that a extension maybe better safe than sorry. Start in there, and if you guys can't see it from outside of the picture, I, I'm talking this thing now. Okay, there you go. Well, time to get that last piston in, y'all. Bam! There you go. And then you're gonna be like, oh, I think I forgot something. <laughs> oh! So, last main cap here. Talk spec engage. Ay, that's nice. <laughs> what day of time it is. I had to go out and uh, pick up some things, but uh, we're back in the shop. As you saw last night, we got all the pistons in, all the rod caps and stuff tightened down. We got the oil pump back in and everything. Right now, I'm gonna throw on the oil pan. Hey, I got the whole iron pan cleaned up, like the rails uh, inside the oil pan and everything like that. And uh, also the rails on the block. And I laid down right now some silicone in, in the corners where the mating surface of the, the main caps and stuff meet. And then we got this thing. Uh, sorry about the messy workbench right now. We're getting things done, okay? I don't got time to clean up. This thing right here is a one-piece rubber with, I think, like an MLS type of uh, steel gasket inside, whatever. Which is really damn nice for, from, from Phil Pro. And I think it was only like 28 bucks. It comes with new bolts, new uh, washers, and the gasket itself is just way nicer than the, the two cork gaskets and the rubber strip and stuff like that. Plus, you can actually talk them down to spec without like the cork uh, squishing out or anything like that. So that's way nicer. So we're gonna throw that on right now, and then I'm just gonna put a dab of silicone right there in the corners. If it doesn't seal completely tight right there, or if there's any like imperfections in the block or the oil pan or anything, the silicone can take like the worst part of there. It's not like I'm gonna goop this thing up or anything. I'm just gonna put a tiny, tiny little droplet right there in, the, in each corner, and then we should be good. Let's jump into it. Well, boys, I look like uh, somebody who should be out in the woods right now, chopping down the old oak tree. Yeah, yeah. So I just got done cleaning up the starter, the carburetor, the two heads, the intake. I also sanded down uh, some of the loose paint on the old oil pan here. Now I'm gonna pretty much put the whole engine back together if you will, so it's sealed up. And then I'm gonna completely spray it down with some degreaser, some heavy duty stuff that I have, and then uh, rinse it off with uh, just pure water or whatever to get all that degrease off. And then we're also gonna use a torch or whatever to burn all the like parse, cast metal or whatever. Cause you won't believe it, but actually a lot of like grease and moisture and stuff actually get trapped in cast metal, if you will. And I'll show you when I, I'm gonna torch this uh, block or whatever, you, you will really see how much evaporates out of the cast iron or whatever. It's kind of insane actually. Uh, a good trick that I learned from Uncle Tony Garage. Now, when you're gonna paint the engine like this, you wanna mask everything off. Because uh, you don't really want paint where you don't want paint. What I used to do is I have these old set of like tall chrome valve covers or whatever. And I use those as a uh, masking. Just gonna bolt these loosely on right now. And then we can uh, 
lay down some orange. So I just used like the past 45 minutes cleaning this thing up and it's ready now, all degreased. So uh, we're gonna pop it in to the heat cabin. And I think first thing tomorrow, I'm just gonna go out, start the heat up and heat the whole room up. So uh, we can get some heat into the engine, to the metal, to the surfaces and stuff like that. And then I'm also gonna take a little uh, torch or whatever and show you guys how we're gonna burn out all like the moisture and stuff uh, from the block and the cast iron. And away we go. Away we go. What I'm gonna try to show you guys is how the cast iron is actually like gonna change the color. Can you see how it's drying up? That's all like the moisture and grease still left in the parts like cast iron that's getting burned off. So we are officially ready to paint the little small block over here, it's mask off. I just got the room up to, I think like 80 degrees or something, but uh, then I ran out of diesel. So, uh, because apparently this, this heater or whatever uses way more diesel than I thought, sadly. There it is, let's get some orange on the thing. So there you go, the small block is painted, it's orange, how wonderful. And there you go, we got a painted 350 small block. Got all the unmasking off, just put the valve coats on and laid the air cleaner on it for fun, you know, mock up. That's what our car guys do, to get inspired and motivated to do more. So you can see what happens in the future, the end result. So we got done painting the engine and it turned out freaking damn amazing. Looks cool with the old school Fendt aluminum valve covers. Uh, all the accessory brackets, pulleys and stuff, uh, everything we can on the engine. And then we're gonna put it in the car, turn the key. One. If it does kind of sound like that, it's probably need a new style, huh? So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like down below if you guys want to help this video out and hit the subscribe button if you guys want to see the future videos coming. See you later, compadre.